Hi, my name is Glenn Jennings and my role in CFA is that of the State Driving Coordinator. So my position in CFA is to coordinate driver education, also get involved in vehicle design, vehicle manufacture as far as our firefighting and air transport vehicles, the production of the relevant training and assessment packages for those vehicles and I also manage the collision investigation team. So some of the major work that's going on re regards driver training in CFA at the moment is that of the state driving strategy. Following the tragic death of two volunteer firefighters several years ago, CFA gave a commitment to improve our driver education and provide a safer environment for our drivers and also for the communities. We have been working on this strategy for a number of years, which is quite complex. Our Chief Officer Steve Warrington has recently confirmed what his requirements are for our members, in particular our volunteers. As a result, we're going to have a two-tier approach. The brigades in categories one and two, which are our lower risk, will have an internal qualification that we are working towards, whereas our busier brigades in our more urban areas in categories three, four and five will be required to undertake the national competency, which is drive vehicles under operational conditions. This decision has been made by the Chief based upon risk and activity, and obviously those risks are increased as you drive in our more urban areas. So this is a major change for CFA. For our career staff, back in 1972, it was made mandatory that all of our staff undertook a driving course to a national standard. It hasn't been the same for our volunteers. Even though we do hold national competencies and we have been working towards those for a number of years, it has not been mandatory for all of our volunteers to have this requirement. So it is a major change for CFA. However, for a lot of our people, it should be uh, an easy process to go from what they're currently doing to meeting the new requirements. For our Category 1 and Category 2, the, it will be an internal um, requirement, an internal competency, of which will be probably based around a, a one-day course. Part of that course will be to understand the legislation and the Chief Officer's SOPs and a presentation about driver behaviour and attitude and how to make sure that they drive in a safe environment. For our Category 3, 4 and 5, as I said, it will be the national competency of which a large number of our members already hold their competency and many of the districts are already conducting courses. We are still to determine what the operational requirements will be for off-road driving. So we still have to do a fair bit of work with the ops managers and brigade management teams as to how many members in each brigade needs off-road driver training. At this stage, there is no fixed time frame for the rollout of the program. We are still going through all the numbers to determine how many in each category are required for each of the brigades. We also are doing an audit of our volunteer drive instructors to determine how many have the appropriate train and assess competencies to be both trainers and assessors. Once we get our final numbers, which we hope to have in the next couple of months, we'll be able to determine as to how long the program will be to roll out to, to achieve our numbers across the state. Driving is a very emotive subject and everyone believes that, you know, why should they need to go and do something they already hold a licence. However, history has shown that every person who has attended a CFA course is coming away learning something in particular, update to road rules. So yes, there is going to be some opposition, we know that. However, it will be a process where we will provide a lot more opportunities than what we did previously to make it a little bit easier for everybody. Those who have skills from out outside the organisation that can be transferred across, we will be recognising those. Instead of making everybody do a course, you can have a look at the skills pack and have a look and go, I actually believe that I can meet those outcomes. We can offer a challenge test, so you may find a 30 or 40 minute drive and you can be signed off. However, the major component that will be part of this process will be CFA legislation and SOPs and policies. Our collision investigations have revealed that over the years, a majority of these have been caused by our members not having poor driving skills. It's been by them not understanding or complying with the Chief Officer's SOPs, road rules or state or federal legislation. We currently deliver this program as a face-to-face -face program. However, I can advise that in coming months, there will be an online presentation available where members who have access to computers or tablets etc can go online, work their way through the online presentation, undertake the formal assessment which will then be recognised on your respective training record. Members may also be aware of some recent changes in relation to fatigue and 
driving records under the National Heavy Vehicle Regu Regulator and also under some changes that come in on the 1st of October in relation to the chain of responsibility. These are nationally driven and CFA currently has a working party in place looking at the new legislation and then any impacts it's going to have on CFA members, particularly our volunteers. We have a lot of good safe systems of work currently in place and we're working through those to ensure that if they need tweaking, we can do the, the relevant changes and then to communicate those changes out to our members. It is going to take us several months to go through the legislation and all the impacts and you'll hear more from us in the coming months. We are aware that many of our members are aware of these proposed changes because they actually own vehicles over the 4.5 tonnes or in particularly 12 tonnes that does have an impact. Our farmers who are our members out there have been advised of the changes and it will affect them in some way. So it is going to be some natural, you know, it will be naturally concern for our people out there. However, we believe that a lot of the systems and with some of the new ones that we will consider, we'll be able to meet the legislation. In relation to vehicle operations, we know that our fire ground practices or FGPs are out of date and we are currently working through that process at the moment. We have now a full-time member who is reviewing all of those FGPs, this person being an operations manager, Mark Glover, and our role is to make sure that during 2019, all fire ground practices are updated and loaded for our members to use online.